We're looking at a species called the short tail stingray, and it's, it's the largest stingray species in the world, up to 2.1 metres across. Um, it's a species that's quite famous for uh, inhabiting Poor Nights Island during the summer, so thousands of stingrays swarm to Poor Nights Island for, for mating and for bringing, we think for mating, and for bringing up their offspring. So we wanted to look at whether there's a difference in the way that males and females move around throughout their lifetime. So um, we thought that because females are going to these places every year to, to breed, that perhaps they move around less than males do. And what we found was over their lifetime and throughout their, their ancestors' history, males are moving up to five times, at least five times more than females, at least travelling throughout the coast of New Zealand all the way down to Marlborough Sounds, as far as we know, from, from potentially the north, north point of New Zealand. We get that information from taking small samples from, from stingrays in the wild, so it's, it's not harmful, they don't get um, killed or anything like that. Um, it's either just a little clipping off, off their fin or a little biopsy doesn't hurt them. Um, so we're looking at differences in, in DNA. So it's small differences between individuals that will tell us um, where they've moved from throughout their life. So, so an individual from, say, Poor Knights Island might have similarities to an individual from the West Coast. So we know that because they've got that same DNA, that, that one we found at Poor Knights Island is originally from the West Coast. So we can use those similarities and differences to track where they've moved throughout their lifetime.